Hey everyone, welcome to my channel The Salty Life and to another project in my salty journey. Today I will be setting up my first copepod culture. My fish enjoy live copepods and if you guys plan on having a hard to feed fish or a fish that primarily eats live food like a mandarin dragonette, this guide will help you in setting up a culture of your own to ensure your fish get all the food they need to thrive and live healthy lives. These are the things you will need to set up an easy copepod culture. A nice sized container or small tank of your choice. I've gone for a 3.5 litre container, an air pump, an airline and air control valve, a feeding pipette for easy control of feeding, copepods of course, and copepod feed, live for phytoplankton is best. I got all these bits as an all-in-one copepod culture pack for $34.99 but you can buy them separately, I just found it to be cheaper and a lot easier doing it this way. An item which is optional but advised to make it easier to harvest your pods when they are ready is a copepod sieve, one that is specifically designed to catch pods as you don't want them slipping through the net. Another optional thing is a small LED light. This may be needed just to mimic the day and night cycle if you are storing your culture in a cupboard or under your tank. But if you are storing your culture where it will see natural light, artificial light isn't necessary. These are all the basic things you will need to set up a successful culture. And as a first timer culturing pods, buying all the things I needed in one go made things a lot easier. So let's set up our culture. Firstly, you will have to drill two holes in the lid. Luckily, this container came already drilled so I didn't have to do any of the drilling. What you will need is a hole big enough for the airline to fit into and a smaller one for gas exchange. Next, I'm going to fill the container two thirds of the way with freshly mixed salt water. I mixed my salt to 1.025 salinity, which is the same salinity as my aquarium. That way, when I put the pods in the tank, the salinity is the same as what they are used to. Make sure the water is completely mixed before adding it to your container. Do not use tank water as it contains organisms that could crash your culture and I'm sure you wouldn't want that to happen and you would want to give your culture the best start possible. Now I'm going to add our copepods. Copepods can live in temperatures lower than 10 degrees Celsius but optimal breathing temperature for these guys is between 20 and 25 Celsius. I'm storing these guys inside my home and the temperature doesn't drop below 20 degrees Celsius so I won't need a heater but if you guys live in colder climates or are storing your culture in a shed or outbuilding you may need a heater to keep your culture at optimal temperature. Once your copepods are in their new container, you will then need to add some food for these guys. It's recommended you add a little bit of food at a time till the water has a slight green tinge to it. If you overfeed, you can risk crashing your culture. That's where the pipettes come in handy. They are perfect for controlling how much food you dose and make sure you don't accidentally dump a load of feed into the water and kill off your culture. When your copepods are in their new home with some feed, you will then need to add your airline into the container. Make sure it sits near the bottom. Luckily, this pack came with a little suction cup to hold the airline in place in the container. An air source is needed to add oxygen to your culture and to give it some water movement and surface agitation to help with gas exchange. Next, you will want to attach your air control valve and air pump to the airline. You do this by cutting the airline and attaching the air valve to the piece that goes into your culture. Then attach the other bit of airline that will connect to your air pump and voila, done. I took the pods where I'm going to keep them temporarily until I sort out some LED lights under my tank's cabinet. At the moment they are sitting on top of my beardy viv near a window so they will receive natural light for now. It took me a while to get the airflow just right. You want the airflow to be slow so it isn't blowing your copepods all over the place. It took some trial and error but eventually I got there. I ended up having to tie a loose loop into the airline to get the bubbles so they came out at a couple of seconds. Now everything is just right. You can also add some macro algae or some live rock but it isn't necessary and just makes it a pain when you need to clean out your container with water changes or when you're harvesting your pods. 
One more quick point to make is don't forget to mark where you filled your salt water up to because when you start getting evaporation you will need to top off your culture with fresh RO water, not salt water and at least having the line there helps you in knowing where to fill it back up to. So this super simple way is a great no hassle approach. I may change things in the future but for now that's it. I have started my own culture. I can't wait to see how it does. Hopefully we have booming copopod populations in no time. This video is the start of a new series of videos documenting the culture. I will still be doing my tank videos but will upload a culture vid when new things happen to keep you updated on what's going on and any changes I make. If you enjoyed my video please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of the culture's journey and my aquarium life, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any feedback or questions, feel free to comment below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.